Women constitute more than half the world's population, yet they are silenced in almost every sector of society. The participation in governance processes where decisions regarding their lives are made remains peripheral in many countries. My home country of Zimbabwe has a legal framework that values gender equality and equity. However, Zimbabwe is a far cry away from achieving this sustainable development goal. This can be evidenced by the plight of the rural woman who has to travel long distances in search of water and firewood and this places a burden on them and their participation in decision-making processes. The Zimbabwean constitution provides for the participation of women in politics. These women, however, still have to battle against the stigmatization of being labeled the weaker sex. This is just one example of how women are silenced in patriarchal societies where the role of a man is given significance. Even women are at the helm of perpetuating these patriarchal norms within an African context, such as assigning gender roles, placing women in the kitchen and not at the decision-making table. My name is Saneli Siwa Emma Milo and I'm, an, I'm a creative an entrepreneur and a lawyer who is passionate about women owning their narrative and providing a platform for them to share their thoughts. Zimbabwe is a predominantly patriarchal society and by patriarchy I mean the manifestation and institutionalization of male dominance over women and children in the family and the extension of male dominance over women in society in general. Patriarchy is an African problem. Patriarchy may even be a global problem. I grew up around strong African women who were not so readily eager to share their opinions on issues or have their voices heard during family meetings or public gatherings because they were clearly silenced by being told that such spaces are reserved for men. Even in the face of gender-based violence, women remain silent. The narrative that women are created inferior has religious efficacy as the Christian story of creation has Eve been created second and as Adam's helper. Culture even reinforces these ideas. However, the problem is not individual cultures or cultural norms. The problem is aspects of patriarchy embedded within culture that serve to maintain and sustain these norms. So what can be done? Women need safe spaces where they can share their thoughts and ideas, free of intimidation, full of encouragement, and lots of underlying support. Revalidating their opinions. Women within the home setup need to change the way they raise their children, where male children are raised in an environment encouraging equity, and the female children are aware of the equal opportunities afforded to them. Women need other women to speak up, to engage, to join the male voices in the crowd. And I know some women who are doing exactly that in Zimbabwe. A great example is a 2019 Mandela Washington Fellow, Linda Kushinga Sivanyoni, who is engaged in politics and ran as a member of parliament during the 2018 general elections. Another example is the landmark Supreme Court ruling in Mora versus Mora, where equality upon dissolution of a marriage was settled. The Zimbabwean government recently approved the Labour Amendment Bill that sees female employees now accessing fully paid maternity leave for a period of three months. This being a positive change for Zimbabwean women in the workforce. And let's not forget the stellar work done by human rights defender and lawyer Beatrice Mtetwa. I'd just like all the women listening to this to say this with me. If those women can do it, so can I. If those women can do it, so can I. One more time. If those women can do it, so can I. And as a lawyer currently practicing as a public prosecutor, in my small space of the world, I ensure that women are given a platform to share their stories, to speak up for themselves within the context of a courtroom setting. Several organizations in Zimbabwe, such as the Zimbabwe Women Lawyers Association, provide safe spaces for women by engaging in community discussions, focus groups, and empowering women to be able to share within their communities, imparting knowledge on their rights. As Africans, we need to create these safe spaces for our women and nurture their voices within the family context, as well as in the public spaces, so that their voices are among the many voices that can be heard resoundingly by society. As Africans, 
we need to create more organizations and platforms that are Afrocentric, created by Africans for Africans. And because our very foundation is based on the concept of Ubuntuism, these safe spaces must emerge from our communities, beginning in our very homes. Our men should allow the women in their lives to have an opinion. I am my sister's keeper, and so are you. Africa, we can do this. And in closing, I leave you with the words of Maya Angelou, a famous poet and civil rights activist, who said, each time a woman stands up for herself, without knowing it possibly, without claiming it, she stands up for all women. Thank you.